Hello there and welcome to Liz at Home. This is Liz here. Thanks for joining me. Today is just going to be a relaxed colour in a colour by numbers book. I'm going to be doing something for the hashtag of Marita Teddy and now of course I can't remember what it's called but I'll put it up on the screen now. It's something to do with sea life and I'm going to be doing this image and I'm going to be doing it using wax crayons and alcohol markers to outline just to be relaxed and without further ado I'm just going to get started. I hope that you enjoy. So I decided that I'll do a voiceover for this video because while I was colouring I really felt that I just needed to relax so I had on my audiobook and I was really enjoying just colouring. I'm looking at the colour name and trying to find a colour that matches that name in my alcohol markers. I'm just using these very inexpensive touch alcohol markers and I'm just going with the closest thing I can find. And then I saw Val and the Seven Colours, who is on Instagram, had done one of these colour by numbers where she outlined in alcohol marker and filled it in with wax crayon. And to me, that just looked like a fun thing to do. And as I've mentioned before this year so far, I'm making an effort to try and use my art supplies this year. So I have these wax crayons that I bought for fun a little while ago and I have hardly used them so I thought okay this is a great thing and I'm going to do that and what I really like about it is that they're more or less except for the yellow as you will see they more or less actually cover the number so that you get quite a nice looking picture so I was kind of wondering what I would talk about as I did the voiceover and I may end up putting some music on a little bit later uh, if I run out of things to talk about but I thought it might be interesting for me to read some things that I've looked up about colouring and where colouring books started and all of that sort of thing so I found in an old magazine in an old time magazine an article about it and I'm going to read some of the things from that to you and it says here that an early variation of colouring books could be the illustrations for two volumes of a very long descriptive poem with the name of Polly Albion by Michael Drayton published all, all the way back in 1612 and 1622 and they were apparently republished in 2016 for modern colouring book aficionados. Let me know in the comments if you've ever seen anything about Polly Olbion, O-L-B-I-O-N, because I never have. Anyway, the illustrations in this book were engraved maps of counties in England and Wales featuring fantastical creatures According to art historian Anne-Louise Avery, who edited the reprinting, it became quite fashionable to hand colour it yourself. So, and um, whether aristocrats were really sitting around colouring in their maps isn't quite certain. For example, specialist map seller Tim Bryars told Wales Online that though he had seen hand-coloured copies from time to time, he's never bought into the idea that people colored them in at home on a rainy Sunday afternoon. So I found that quite interesting. What do you think of that? I know that in olden times, ladies in the aristocratic places always did watercolors and art. So I read another interesting thing, which I found on Wikipedia in a history of coloring. And that says that Paint books and colouring books emerged in the United States as part of the democratisation of art. The process was inspired by a series of lectures by British artist Joshua Reynolds and the works of a Swiss educator, Johann Heinrich Pestalozzi, and his student Friedrich 
Froebel, many educators concluded that all students, regardless of background, stood to benefit from art education as a means of enhancing their conceptual understanding of the tangible. So I find that quite interesting because what that means is how you conceive and how you understand that which you can touch. And um, then they also said that it developed their cognitive abilities and improved skills that could be useful in finding a profession as well as for the children's spiritual education. And then that says later on that the McLaughlin brothers are credited as the inventors of the coloring book when in the 1880s they produced a book called The Little Folks Painting Book in collaboration with Kate Greenaway. And they apparently continued to publish coloring books until the 1920s when the McLaughlin brothers became part of the Milton Bradley Company. So I found all of that kind of quite interesting. And if you Google all of those things, you can find pictures of these. And I just, I don't know, I, I like history and I like finding how things came about and how they came into being. Um, let me know if you know anything about this. I've looked up some of this polyolbian and some of the, it's spelt, let me write this on screen. If you Google that word, then you might find some some of the pictures. It was called the Poly, and oh, I've lost that bit. The Poly Albion by Michael Drayton, and it was a descriptive poem. But the illustrations look quite amazing. So, yeah, I find that quite fascinating. Anyway, that's the interesting info for you further education today. <laughs> so back to the colouring here and so now I'm finally going around all of these squares as per the colours suggested with with the alcohol marker and then I'm going to fill them in with wax crayon. Okay so I've cut out some of the footage because I'm sure you don't want to see me slowly going through everything. I really like these particular wax crayons. I'll put a link to them for you in the more information beneath the video. I bought them at Amazon either last year or the year before. I can't actually remember when. But um, yeah, they're, I don't know if they're wax or plastic, I think. Anyway, they they colour quite nicely and they really have quite a good coverage. I mean, it's a crayon, so it's not like having an art supply, a, a professional art supply result, but I think that looks quite good. Okay, so now we're going to go on to the next bit that we'll need to outline, and then we're going to need some orange.
So magically we're half done with this. It's sort of an orange and the required color was a red brown. And I used the closest I had. And um, I, I must say when one does the colors in these color by number books, I quite like it because I would never ever in a million years have put purple and um, pink, although I think it was actually supposed to be lavender and purple on the outside. I think I used the wrong color marker, but put those and then the yellow and brown. But if you think about it, blue and yellow are sort of opposite sides of the color wheel, not sort of, they are opposite sides of the color wheel. And so if one uses color theory, then by rights, this should pop out quite well together because you've got the the orange against the blue, brown is a neutral, and they required a red brown, so that sort of pinkish purple, um, you know, it, it all it all works together in according to color theory, and yet it just wouldn't have occurred to me. I always go back to my same colors, and I was sort of thinking, and do let me know in the comments whether you think this is a good idea or not, that it might be fun for me to take this picture and the majority of the colors in it, maybe not every single one, and use that as a color palette for another random picture, say maybe in one of my Hannah Carlson books or something. Excuse my gray hair peering over and trying to see. I'm going to see if I can't zoom in. Yeah, so we get rid of the gray hair and now you can actually see what I'm doing. Um, yeah, let me know if you think that would be a fun challenge for me to give myself and something to do on the channel to use the colors in this particular picture to use this color palette, not, not these materials. I would use something else, probably color pencils or watercolor, or I'm not sure what, but in a coloring book and use that in a different image and see how they work out. Um, please let me know if I get three or, or more comments saying they'd like it, then I will give that a try. If, if nobody comments, then I will presume that it's not something that appeals to anyone. So I'm always looking for something fun to do and I'd love your input on that. It really helps me try and make the space something that you enjoy and something that we collaborate on. So there we have all of the yellow and now they wanted a hot pink and then a normal pink. So I'm going to do the outlines with those and hope that that gets done okay. I find using Markers, I don't know. I'm maybe just a little bit too far away, my eyes, from where I'm doing this, but I couldn't kind of draw straight lines. I was driving myself a little bit crazy doing this. But anyway, I just went ahead and did it. So I'm going to move forward until all of the outlining is done and you can see what it looks like before the wax crayon goes in. There we are, all the outlining nicely done. And now I need to fill in the yellow and I'm still using my plasticky wax crayons to color that in. And then um, I wanted to see if they had this other color. No, I didn't, I actually, sorry. I needed to sharpen this at my Crayola box. I bought this retro 64 colors box, which I got as a child. I didn't get this particular one. I got the crayons looking like this way back in the 1960s when I was a kid. And I, it was my pride and joy to have 64 colors. I mean, I thought I was in heaven. And it's funny, one of the things I liked was all the colors and I liked the feel of it. But whenever I opened the box, that smell of the crayons used to actually make me feel a bit sick. And they still have that same smell. It's actually not really all that pleasant, the smell of wax crayons. Do you like the smell of crayons? Um, is it something that 
that you enjoy or is it something that you're not that keen on? So I'm going to color these in and I think while I do this I'm going to put some music on because I've run out of things to say right now. Maybe something else will pop into my head that I feel like sharing. So I don't know if you noticed, but I have ramped the speed up just a little bit because I'm painstakingly slow with the way I do things. And I went to get my little brush to move all the crumbs because these crayons do make a lot of crumbs and then they sort of stain everything around them. So this is a different brown to the red brown of the previous outline. And again, I mean, it's lots and lots of different colors and yet somehow the whole I think ended up looking quite nice. I'm going off the idea of maybe using the color palette in something because I don't know how I would make it all stand together. Kind of fascinating. I mean the red and the orange and the red, orange and yellow make sense to me. Pink and the purple make sense to me. The orange and the brown make sense to me and maybe orange, brown, red and yellow but with the pink and the purple, and now we've got some greens coming in. So it's very nice and bright and every color under the sun. So I'm quite excited because this tomorrow night, um, my young, my one young grandson 
belongs to a drama school and they are putting on a production of Matilda and he's in it and I'm going to see it tomorrow night and then I'm going to see a matinee on the Saturday and then I'm going again the following Friday night to see it again and I can't wait to see it so I'm really excited. They've been working so hard at it, these children. Uh, the lady that runs the drama school, the drama lab, is called Julie Dixon. And she does the most incredible work with these children. So they do what's known as the junior version. So it's only an hour and a half. Um, but I really am looking forward to it so much. So everything is kind of gearing up for that. And then there have been all sorts of other vocal competitions for my pupils, lately and we've been working hard for all of that as well so it's been all systems go just recently my life is in the music world and then i sit here and i do all these arty things online and I often think it's funny i should be doing music stuff online i always just felt funny about doing music stuff online because it's kind of my whole profession and i wanted to share something that if I do get trolls and stuff, it doesn't really affect me other than emotionally. It doesn't affect my job. Whereas if I'm doing something that's my profession, then if you get the nasties in the comments, it's it really can become quite damaging. So, um, so that was one of the decisions not to. And the other decision was that I think there are a lot of people that do very good online vocal lessons and things like that, but my ethos and my view of giving vocal lessons is always that you do best with a one-on-one -on -one lesson with a trained teacher who can learn to know your voice and work well with you. And I feel that if I do that online, I can't hear what you're doing. So I give some information and I don't know how you're interpreting it. So I think with art, it's similar, but there's something visual that you can see. Even with piano, with violin, with guitar, you can see something visually. Singing is very much how you're interpreting something to the sensation within your body. And so that's another reason why I've never done that as my YouTube channel. I do watch some people and they do a very good job, I must say, so I'm not trying to malign them. Well, now we're getting somewhere in this very bright, colorful looking thing. And I'm doing some of the inside and outlining these. And I think I'm going to put some more music on for you to listen to. This video is quite long and I hope that you're colouring along with me. I've cut it down. I think I coloured for about four hours while I was doing this. I've cut it down as much as I could. And I hope that you're enjoying it. Do let me know, please.
We're getting to the end of the image now. I must say, I really, 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 really enjoyed coloring this. I love my color by number books. I don't have many of them, but I have enough. And um, there's so many images still to color in them. But I just find it very relaxing to to do that. And I, I knew I had to color. I'm trying to, my plan and my aim at the moment with my channel is to do a glue booking video on Monday, a watercolor video on Wednesday, and a coloring video on Friday. I think that's kind of a way for me to incorporate the three sides of the things I'm enjoying. Whether I manage to stick to that or not will be for us all to see what the future holds. I I'm enjoying my mixed various art endeavors. I really enjoy them so much and they keep me enthusiastic and they keep me kind of engaged in everything. But I do have so many other things that I'm very lucky to do as well with the teaching and looking after grandchildren and all of that sort of thing. So life is full of blessings and it's really wonderful. So I'm going to skip ahead and let you see what this looks like at the end now. So now you can just see the very last three bits of colour going in and then we're going to be finished. I do hope that you've enjoyed this video and if you've liked it please remember to like it on the little thumbs up and to leave me a comment and let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching and I wish you a wonderful, creative, happy and fulfilling week of good health and joy. Lots of love to everybody. Bye-bye now.